live from Austin, Texas, it's The Cube. Covering South by Southwest 2017. Brought to you by Intel. Now, here's John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live coverage of South by Southwest here in Austin, Texas. This is Silicon Angles The Cube, our flagship program. Where we go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier. Our next guest is Ali Bahabazadeh. Almost, Bahabzadeh. Bahazbadeh, Bahazbadeh. CEO of Chariot, a hot startup that was acquired by Ford Mobility Solutions uh, last September, really innovating in what I call the sharing economy, what's been called, not I call, the sharing economy, but this really highlights the paradigm shift. So Ali, I want to thank you for coming on, appreciate it. Thank you for having me, John. So Chariot, who's one of your cities, is not only in the Bay Area, but here in Austin, give a quick uh, highlight of what's going on here in Austin for you guys, and the freebie for the South by Southwest goers. Yeah, so Chariot is, uh, is, uh, is reinventing mass transit by uh, crowdsourcing new routes in neighborhoods that either have, uh, don't have enough commuter options, or uh, you know, there's commuter options, but there's not enough space on buses and trains. So uh, we crowdsource these routes and we launch operations in these neighborhoods um, once, uh, uh, once we hit a tipping point and uh, we get vehicles on the road. So um, we started in San Francisco in 2014. Uh, we expanded to uh, Austin, and then most recently, in uh, September, we got acquired by Ford Smart Mobility, uh, and to become a cornerstone of Ford's mobility strategy for many years to come. So this really highlights the sharing economy, as I said, but what's going on is that the user's interface to the real world is becoming digital. So obviously, cars are not digital yet, they'll be self-driving soon, and Ford's announced mass production in five years, um, but it points to their relationship with others, collaboration, this is the big AI trend that kind of gets surfaced in terms of real, real world benefits. Yeah, it's incredible. Everyone knows that Ford makes incredible cars, but Ford also wants to be a mobil mobility company as well. And so uh, with this thing that we have in our pockets, the phone, it provides a tremendous amount of data about us, commuters, riders, people who are trying to get from A to B. And by harnessing that data, either uh, for now it's uh, you know, given to us by the users themselves, by harnessing that data, um, we can make some really intelligent and efficient choices about where our vehicles, in our example, 14 passenger Ford Transit wagons, should be and could be to pick people up at the times where they need it the most. All right, Ali, I want to kind of get you to, to riff on a, something with me. Okay, imagine um, you're reimagining the future, I love that, or reinventing mass transit. So reimagine some of the amazing things that are possible in your vision, just kind of, yeah. Roll forward a few years. I mean, we're going to have headsets and virtual reality and holograms. I can bring my yeah. my my experience inside the vehicle. Not only am I just getting a ride somewhere. Yeah. I mean, in in our area in Silicon Valley, the Google buses and the company buses all got Wi-Fi. They're all working away. So I can imagine that you must have a vision for technology into your product. Yeah, indeed. Can you share I mean, your vision on that. Yeah, I mean, imagine uh, most people's commute is the twice daily worst part of their of their day. Um, we've moved the needle, even without um, a lot of experimental uh, things going on inside the chair, we've moved it to, it's actually a, a decent part of your day and you don't have to worry about it anymore. What Chariot and Ford is looking forward to doing in the next couple of years is to actually make it, believe it or not, the best part of your day. Uh, you mentioned uh, VR, um, entertainment options, social connecting options with other people in the chariot who uh, you may either want to network with professionally in the future or maybe even socially, perhaps your next date is on board. And so there's so many things that could be you could be doing in a chariot because we know your preferences, we know where you're commuting from and to, we know what you want to eat for dinner, we know where you want to go for happy hour on Thursday night, and uh, the chariot so, AI can actually be suggesting to you what chariot to get on, at what time, and these folks are going to be on board with you so, at that point. So you know I'm craving some buffalo wings, you just pull off the exit and I get some wings, yeah, or I mean, bio break, I got a Fitbit, I don't know, John needs to take a, you know, take, take a bio break. Just like, I mean, this is, I mean, I'm kind of being over the top, but this is kind of what you're thinking, right? Yeah, perhaps I mean, you're on a diet <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the device on your hand or the app, uh, the diet app on your phone knows exactly what you had for breakfast and lunch, 
and perhaps a chariot is headed in a certain neighborhood with a vegetarian option and you've had too much meat in the day, um, it could suggest to you, hey, get off on this curb because there's a, a wonderful option here for you to have a non-protein meal. Um, these are... But that's in your vision. You see that future. It's in the future and it's not too distant from where we are right now. I mean, what I think is cool between Chariot and Ford is Ford has these incredible resources, also has vision with what they can do in the vehicle. Uh, Chariot, in a very short amount of time, in less than three years, we were able to uh, penetrate a very attractive market um, of young professionals and, and actually have them tell us what, they're, what they want to do, where they want to go from, and where they want to go to. And we're just scratching the surface right now. All right, so tell me about your experiences here at South by Southwest. What's the vibe of the show? Um, we've seen some touch points around. It's a VR show, it's some AI. Other things that you're observing that you could surface and say is a, the key storylines that are developing on day one of South by Southwest. Yeah, you know, uh, it's my first South by Southwest, John. And <laughs> I was walking over here with a friend and I was remarking to her that I actually feel this is probably what World's Fairs were like 100 years ago when people were discovering new technologies and companies like Ford were actually big participants in World's Fair. This feels like a yeah. 21st century World's Fair and I'm just seeing such incredible uh, installations and companies that I've never heard of before looking to make an impression on consumers and future users. Yeah. Companies that don't even have a product, don't even have a service on uh, uh, in reality right now and are just providing you a peek into the future. So it's my first day here. Yeah. I can't wait for the next few days. Well, it's also a good mashup of creativity, um, industry, and just people, it's a melting pot of just kind of yeah. laid back, it's Austin, so it's pretty cool here. Yeah, Easy yeah. living, as they say. Yeah, no, absolutely. And there are people from uh, who, are, who are looking at what the future can hold, and also there are people who are, I, I'm, I can see in the look of their eyes, <laughs> like, where, what is my next startup going to be? Or where can I take my career next? Is it, you know, uh, smart transportation like Chariot? Or is it something in VR or AI or something that doesn't even, exist today, and so it's great to see um, this collaboration and people also meeting each other who have never yeah. met each other before and uh, right. breaking clicks and meeting new people for the first time. All right, so a personal question, last question to give you a, kind of on a personal note. Take your CEO chariot hat off at Forbes Smart Mobility, put on your personal Ollie hat. What are you most excited about? It's not with the chariot, but outside of chariot, as you look at the real world, technically yeah. speaking, what are you most excited about? What's 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 uh, floating your boat, so to speak? You know, or, or driving your car or chariot, <laughs> riding in a chariot because you don't have to drive anymore. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, I've, I'm honored that I'm going to have dinner with a bunch of uh, mayors this evening, including Mayor Adler and and uh, several others. And I tell you what, when I started the company three years ago, no one would pick up our phone, regulators, uh, city officials, and the like. But now, I think that uh, uh, city and urban leaders, uh, whether it's Chamber of Commerce, the Mayor's Office, the Transit Authority, the Housing Authority, whatever the case may be, they really are open to not just innovations in transit, but innovations in housing, innovations of working together, live work. And uh, in a very short three years, I've seen that sea change in the attitude. And it's going to be, I think it's uh, you know a dam that's opened up, and I think you're only going to see this momentum accelerate with the civic, um, the civic authorities and innovators and technologists yeah. actually working together. It's a real impact. Final, final question, since I just, one popped in my head. What is AI going to do for your business, your industry, transportation and chariot in general? What is AI's impact to your industry? I think AI is going to take cars off the street. It's going, because, we are going to know where people are coming from and going to at what probable hours, and so we can run much more efficient routes and much more efficient networks, run larger vehicles, larger format vehicles, as opposed to single occupancy vehicles like you'll see on Rainy Street tonight. And so that gets me really excited because it doesn't only improve the yeah. human experience, yeah. it helps the environment, yeah. and it's all good things. I can't think of a downside for AI in transportation. Well, there might be some disruption and some transition. Let's just take one simple example, parking lots. Yeah. What are you going to turn them into? I can't wait to see <laughs> parking lots. 
converted into lower income housing, into park, into parks, public easements, into public easements, into uh, into more so shared impact office is, workspace. The impact's bigger than people think. Uh, I mean, just walk down uh, Brazos Street or Congress Street. It seems like every other building is a parking garage, or half of a building is now a parking garage. We have to stop building parking garages. We have to stop providing free parking both at yeah. home and at work so that we can force yeah. and transition people into different formats of commuting. Like so, so all these jobs that are going away are now being shifted. Now you can, uh, idea for people out there watching, just get in the business of retrofitting garages into housing. That's a uh, new opportunity. That's my next startup, John. <laughs> Are you in? I'm in. Okay. Seed funding. This is theCUBE here live at South by Southwest at the Intel AI Lounge. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. More after this short break. Thanks.